Hello and welcome to TTV News, some latest event across the country in Indian Province. Ladies and gentlemen, on the morning of October 19, 2024, the Indian Province Party Committee had a thematic report conference to serve the document for the 12th Congress of the Indian Province Party Committee for the 2026-2030 tenure. Mr. Nguyễn Thanh Tam, members of Central Committee of Communist Party of Vietnam, Secretaries of Provincial Party Committee, Chairman of People's Council of the Nguyen Province, and heads of the Subcommittee for the 12th Congress of the Nguyen Provincial Party Committee, term 2026-2030, attended and chaired the conference. Attending the event also were the research group from the Universities of Economics and Law in Ho Chi Minh City. Leaders of various departments and sectors, the Ruins of People Culture Committee, the Tinan Business Association, and the Tinan Youth Entrepreneur Association. Mr. Nguyen Thanh Tam emphasized the important role of the conference. He noted that the discussion and contribution from the participating group with the spirit of responsibility would, would lead to high quality results. Mr. Kikuman, Director of the Department of Planning and Investments of Tinan Robbins, presented a report evaluating the current status of the Tinan business community. His report analyzed the strong witnesses, opportunities, and challenges facing local businesses. Based on the provincial planning, the goal is for the business community to grow significantly in the quantity, quality, and structure with reason, intelligent, ethic, spirit, and social responsibility. By 2030, the aim to meet the goal of industrialization and modernization, with businesses holding the important position and role in the key sectors of the province. At least 12,800 businesses are expected to register and operate by 2030, with number increasing to at least 25,900 by 2045. Ladies and gentlemen, on the morning of October 19, 2024, the Tinan Robinson Party Committee continued to hold the conference to hear a report for the document of the 12th Congress of the Tinan Robinson Party Committee for the 2026-2030 tenure, with a focus on the agricultural sector. Mr. Winden Swing, Director of the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, presented the report on the progress of agriculture and rural development under the 11 Provincial Party Congress Resolution and the agricultural sector achieved for four out of five key targets. Until the targets for the new rural development program were not fully met, adjustments have been made to suit the local conditions, and the sector saw an average annual growth rate of 3% with the earnings per hectare subcultivated land reaching for 115 million Vietnam dong, agricultural restructuring followed the set orientation and leading to increases in the production of key crops and livestock. And the report also highlighted the sector's weaknesses, opportunities and challenges, and forming the basis for setting the general goals for agricultural development in the province. And by 2030, Tenen aims to become a key supplier of agricultural products for the South region and the Southern Economic Hub. And the province's primary agricultural products will increasingly adhere to good agricultural practices, allowing for traceability and meeting the growing demands of the market. Leaders of various departments, enterprises, and agricultural cooperatives contributed their opinions and proposed solutions for the future development of agriculture and development areas. The discussion centered on addressing existing limitations and difficulties and removing institutional and policy barriers, improving productivity, and ensuring efficiency market access for agricultural products. Other key topics included promoting the development of processing industries, integrating into the value chains, expanding ecological and high-tech farming models, and adapting to climate change, on what enhancing the farmer's income and ensuring the social welfare. Ladies and gentlemen, on October 15, 2024, the Tinan Rovinso People Committee issued a decision on the fee framework for the apartment building management service in the province. According to the decision, the service fee framework for managing and operating apartment building with our evaluator range from 3,000 to 7,400 feet stone per square meter of floor area. 
for apartment building with elevator. The fee ranged from 6,500 to 10,000 Vietnamese stone per square meter of floor area. The subject affected by this regulation include investor of apartment building project, apartment owner, apartment user, apartment building management unit, state management agencies, and other organizations or individual involving the management and operation of apartment building in the environment. The essence of this decision aims to provide a basic for negotiating operational management fee for public access. Furthermore, it serves as a resolution for dispute regarding service fee between parties. But no agreement can be reached. The framework issued by the Provincial People Committee will apply, following the revision in Clause 7, Article 151 of the 2023 Housing Law. On the morning of October 19, at the headquarters of the Tainan Veteran Association, the Tainan Information Liaison Committee held a 10 traditional gathering in 2024. The meeting was chaired by Comrade Nguyễn Văn Lân, heads of the Tainan Information Veteran Liaison Committee. The Tainan Information Veteran Liaison Committee was established on May 29, 2008, and under the decision of 23 of the Tainan Province Veterans Association. And since its foundings, the association has proud to include over 100 members, and these members regularly participate in charity days, visiting, encouraging, and providing both material and spiritual support to fellow members facing them days, helping them to overcome challenges in life. Ladies and gentlemen, on the morning of October 17, the Tainan Rovinso Farmer Association, in coordination with the Eastern Environment Stock Company, launched a program to collect pesticide packaging in areas such as Yimenjou District, Hoa Tao, Dreaming Tao, and Goyo District. The program aims to manage hazardous waste and raise public awareness of environmental protection in agricultural production. At the collection point, the following results were achieved. In Burdom Kamiguyo District, 491 kilograms. In Tepeng Tao, 505 kilograms. In Yuminjo District, 195 kilograms. In Hoa Tan Tao, 533 kilograms. In total, the road ram collected 1,724 kilograms of pesticide packaging and related waste. Imodong Farmer Association has coordinated to set up 22 collection bins where residents can dispose of used pesticide container. When the time comes, the association collect and recess them. The collection process has taken about five days, with 10 commute gathering 50 kilograms of plastic weight each. All waste is brought to the central point in Zhaohun Water, Jemen Town, especially in Dong Thuận, Hưng Thuận, Phước Chỉ and Phước Hoa Commune, as well as Zabin Anh Hoa and Anton Ward. The target from the province was 500 kilograms, but was afraid collecting 505 kilograms. The collection activity was carried out according to land, with two specialized vehicles visiting collection point in Khoihan Hamlet, Bodom Commune People Committee, Tung Hamlet, and Zhaohan Hamlet. Members of Farmer Association oversaw the collection process to ensure that the waste was safely transported and handled according to regulations. Thanks to the efforts of local authority and community engagement, Resident urgently brought used pesticide container and bottle to designated collection point. Specialized vehicle from Eastern Environment Choice Dog Company was stationed at each location to gather in hazardous waste, which were then transported to a treatment facility for self-disposal, ensuring no environmental contamination. The road ramp has achieved strong support from local community, helping to reduce environmental pollution from agricultural activity. This is an important step toward building a cleaner, safer, and more sustainable agricultural sector in the province. Ladies and gentlemen, on the afternoons of October 19, at the Nen Radio and Television Station, a delegation from Wang Hai Radio and Television Station, led by Mr. Do Sung Hong, the beauty directors of Wang Hai Radio and Television Station, conducted an exchange to share experiences on financial autonomy and media economic development. Mr. Võ Văn Quý, the beauty directors of the Nen Radio and Television Station, received the delegation. 
During the meeting, Mr. Vavangui shared insights into the information of operational structure and key achievements of the radio and television station during its transition to World Financial Autonomy. He particularly emphasized the development of pricing models for the commission and communication products and the experience of enhancing program production quality. In addition, Leaders from various specialized departments and officers, both of units, discussed their experiences and solutions in managing and mechanisms and operations with the aim of improving the efficiencies and better handling the workflows. On this occasion, Mr. Do Sung Hong also addressed the challenges and efforts that Wang Ai Radio Television Station faced during its journey towards financial autonomy, and he expressed the appreciation for the valuable experiences shared, which would help improve the station's operational quality in the future. At the meeting, the Nen Radio Television Station and Wang Ai Radio Television Station exchanged gifts as a gesture of respect and goodwill between the two units also. For the 2025 high school graduation exam, a major change has been announced that the material for lecturer exam will be sourced from outside the standard textbook. The exam will maintain its essay format with two sections, reading comprehension and writing. To ensure the quality of the 2025 exam, the Ministry of Education and Training has interrupted school to avoid using text or excerpt from textbook as material for periodic tests. This aims to prevent students merely memorizing or copy rewriting essay. The ministry also called on the educational institution to strengthen the development of question bank and same metric along with the learning objective of the curriculum, helping tell students become familiar with the new format with the high school graduation is same. The audience as a part of its journey to TC Iris. 55 years of and beyond building the responsible value chain. On the morning of October 19, Tan Kong Binghua Joy Stock Company held an agricultural customer conference to review the 2023-2024 season and launch the investment program for the 2024-2025 season. With the commitment to supporting and ensuring the stability for farmers, the company has focused on implementing investment policies and establishing high-quality sugarcane cultivation areas, and this has provided optimal conditions for sugarcane power and growers to engage in the stable and high-yield farming. And for the 2023 and 2024 season, the province cultivated for 16,800 hectares of sugarcane. The average yield was 64.2 tons per hectare with a sugar content of 9.3 ccs and the total amount of fresh sugar can reach for 1,169,000 tons, a 26% increase compared to the previous year. This second breaking production level is the highest in the recent years. In addition to emphasizing mechanization, the company proactively plans for advanced technology such as utilizing TMS software and agri-ass farmers investments in Drone technology not only optimizes the application of pesticides but also enhances the efficiency and ensures the farmer's safety and boosts from both productivity and quality of sugar cane crops. The conference expressed the right to to customers and successful sugar cane production teams for their contribution during the 2023 and 2024 season. It also introduced the investment policies for the 2024 and 2025 sugar cane season and promoted agricultural extension models aiming to collaborate with farmers for sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, to enhance fire prevention, firefighting and rescue capability, the provincial police has implemented various practical solutions, including organizing firefighting and rescue through a production facility, businesses and residential area with high fire risk. This effort aims to strengthen public involvement in fire safety to minimize the damage caused by the fire and explosions. And in the first night of 2014, the provincial police deployed, developed, and approved for 294 firefighting plans and conducted for 116 firefighting and rescue drills at the high-risk locations. One notable event was the first ever provincial level firefighting drilled at Century Synthetic Fiber Corporation branch in Changbang Industrial Park, which involved the participation of the Longmang Provincial Police and also Ho Chi Minh City Police.
We consider the fire prevention and firefighting to be extremely important for all businesses, and that's why we fully support the firefighting drills organized by the Tenant Provincial Palace, and we hope that the relevant agencies will continue to assist us with both training and provocation work to raise the people's awareness so that we can ensure the safety of our people, equipment and access also. In addition, district and town parlors have conducted firefighting rescue drills at the local markets and residential areas with a high risk of fire, and these drills help the residents, especially local firefighting exams and members of household safety ropes, acquire essential skill in firefighting coordination, efficient use of firefighting equipment, and the ability to rescue the people during the incidents. Firefighting rails at the local traditional markets play extremely crucial roles and which make significant contribution to the practical situation. They allow us to be well prepared when a fire or explosion occurs, and it is also a practical opportunity to collide with the reality to apply the full on time motto. These rails have proven essential and they have raised public awareness about the safety of the fire and strengthened the skill of local firefighting forces, allowing them to work seamlessly with the professional firefighters. And the drills also provide the fire prevention police with opportunities to enhance their firefighting expertise. As a result, the risk of fire damage has been significantly reduced, contributing to maintaining security and order in the community. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry of Transport has been assigned as a main investor in a new Fengjiao Ridge construction project, which will be executed under the urgent public investment mechanism with a gone up completion by 2025. The Ministry will complete the project of road process, appoint contractor and initiate construction. Survey and design will be expedited to allow for the early commencement of red pillar construction. Regarding funding, the Ministry of Planning and Investment and the Ministry of Finance have agreed to use Central Budget Contingency Fund for 2024 with disbursement schedule according to the project timelines. The relevant ministry and agencies have agreed to apply current regulation and mechanism for emergency construction project to complete the investigation, survey, design, and investment of robo process. Specialized mechanism will be applied contractor election to ensure the project can break route in December. Ladies and gentlemen, Vietnam has made significant progress in streamlining business regulation and improving regulatory quality. However, the clearer assessments of the impact of this simplification on business environment are needed. This is one of the key recommendations represented in a report released by the Prime Minister Advisory Council on Administrative Residual Reform in collaboration with the World Bank in October 18 in Hanoi. The report titled Improving Business Regulation to Support Productivity Role in Vietnam highlighted the business regulation reform program under the government resolution 68 of 2020 has achieved notable midterm successes with 2,789 regulation, or about 22 percent, simplified or reduced by the end of 2023. Despite the achievement, data gap and lack of measurement tool make it difficult to assess the full impact of this simplification on regulatory quality. Vietnam regulatory quality still lag behind many countries in the region, a key concern for business community. It presents a significant step forward in our collective efforts to unlock Vietnam's full economic potential. As we all know, Vietnam has achieved remarkable economic growth over the past three decades, becoming a global economic star. This success story has been fueled by a combination of factors, including rapid capital accumulation, a plentiful labor presents a significant step forward in our collective
Most of our regulatory could have focused on reducing paperwork and shortening processing time. We have 229 conditional business sector, and each of these sectors has its own specific business condition. What we aim for and what the public and business expect is to reduce the need for procedure, thereby lowering cost. This is the direction we're heading, but there are still limitations. The report concluded while Resolution 60A focuses on quantity goals such as reducing regulation and complying costs. It requires border vision that include economic impact, digital transformation, and public service reform. Vietnam needs to prioritize resources in area or business activity that, that can deliver the highest result in the short term. In the medium term, the comprehensive approach to regulatory reform, incorporating digital transformation in public service delivery, should be a part of reform agenda. And that's all for today's radio news. Thank you for being with us, and goodbye for now.